Good evening. Welcome to our Holy Tuesday Vesper service this evening. Please rise for the opening versicle. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. In our psalmody for this evening, Psalm 32. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore let everyone who is godly Offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. We sing our hymn number 437.
reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark. It was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, he was reclining at table. A woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, Why was this ointment wasted like that? This ointment could have been sold for more than three hundred denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, Wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Many people want to make a name for themselves. They want people to remember them after they die. That is how they will live on, in the hearts and minds of people with their admiration and esteem. But we have seen in recent years how poor and fickle that can be. Those whose names were once synonymous with great deeds are now having their names expunged and their memorials cast down. What was once considered great and noteworthy is no longer. Those once considered heroic are now deemed shameful. Very few are those who will be able to survive such a purge. But we heard of such a one tonight. Oh, Mark doesn't tell us her name. Maybe he didn't know it. 
But her heroic deed and her faithful witness lives on still, as Jesus said it would. Joseph of Arimathea was the one who took the body of Jesus down from the cross and placed it in his own new tomb. But it was this woman who had anointed Jesus' body for that burial two days before. This woman who gave a flask of very costly ointment worth an entire year's wages to her Savior. Why would she do such a thing? Only because she received a gift far more valuable from Jesus, the gift of forgiveness and life. And so she who had been made beautiful by her Savior did, as Jesus said, a beautiful thing. But there is ugliness in the words we heard tonight, too. The ugly words of those who want to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. The ugly words of those who criticize and scold this woman for wasting this expensive gift on Jesus. The ugly words of Judas Iscariot, who offers to betray Jesus to those who want him dead. Those for whom Jesus is not beautiful, are not beautiful, and do not do beautiful. Those for whom Jesus is Savior are beautiful and do beautiful. This woman was not saved by her deed. She was saved by her Savior, and her outpouring of love showed that. Do your deeds... Do your deeds flow from your Savior, from his forgiveness in life? Sometimes, perhaps. But we must confess, often, no. Too often the ugly of our sin and sinful nature is what we do and what others see. Criticizing, scolding, betraying, even as we act piously, like those who thought a far better use of this ointment would have been to sell it and give the money to the poor. Lord, have mercy upon us. And he does. It is why he was born. It is why he was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper. It is why this woman anointed him. It is why he died for ugly wretches like you and me. To mercy us to make us beautiful, to wash us clean of our sins that made beautiful, we do beautiful things. That we not worry about making a name for ourselves, but proudly bear His name, the name He put upon us in our baptism, Christian. And even if no one else remembers anything you did, Jesus does even the little things, the cup of cold water, the bite of food, the clothes for the cold, the visit of the lonely. For whatever he says you did to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it for me. So maybe instead of aspiring to make a name for ourselves, we should aspire to be like this woman someone made beautiful by Jesus, and so who does beautiful things. And if that brings criticism, scolding, betrayal, and worse, well, Jesus told us it would. We should not be surprised. But neither should that stop us. For those for whom Jesus is Savior are beautiful and do beautiful like this woman. It is just who we are in Jesus. We continue now with the singing of the canticle. Oh. 
let my prayer rise before you as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from this day, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things to me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And we continue with the praying of the litany. and assaults of the devil from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death, and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, 
the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit, we implore you to hear us, good Lord, to raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessing to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to forgive our enemies persecutors and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Grant us your peace, O Christ, hear us, O Lord, have mercy, O Christ, have mercy, O Lord, have mercy, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, grant us by your grace so to pass through this holy time of our Lord's Passion, that we may obtain the forgiveness of our sins. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we live in the midst of a world of danger and trouble, among forces unseen that seek us harm. Have mercy on us and spare us. We lift before your throne of grace, all affected by the bridge collapse. Give strength and courage to those working at rescue and recovery. Provide for those in need. Give wisdom and guidance to those in positions of authority. And comfort the mourning. We commend them all into your gracious hands and pray for your good to prevail. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for hearing our prayers on behalf of Jay, who has successfully undergone surgery, and for giving the medical team the skills needed for their work. Restore him fully to health and strength in your time and according to your good and gracious will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quiet. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In our closing hymn, number 422.
Thank you for coming. Have a great night, and I hope I'll see you tomorrow night for our Holy Wednesday Vespers.